In this video, we're going to do an example. So we have to find the slope of the tangent for f of x equals x squared minus 6x at an x value of 4. Now, just for reference, I wrote out the expression for the slope of the tangent that we went over in the overview video. So if you didn't watch that video, make sure you do before continuing on with this example. Now to start this video off, let's draw this function. I drew it right here. So the way I did that is I could just factor out an x and we'd be left with x and x minus 6. So we know that the intercepts happen at 0 and 6 and it's a function that opens up or parabola that opens up because the a value is positive. Now at an x value of 4, which is about here, we have to find the slope of the tangent the line that is just hitting the function at that point. Now to find the actual slope of that tangent, we're gonna have to use the formula. And I actually made an additional formula here. I didn't mention this in the overview video, but when we're finding the slope of the tangent at a specific x value, so an x equals a, where a is some kind of value here, it's four in our example, it's just the same formula, but instead of x, we would just have the a. Sometimes your textbook will show it in this format, so I just wanted to make a note of that. So pretty much, we would just write out this formula here. So the slope of this tangent would equal the limit as h goes to 0 of f of 4 plus h minus f of 4 all over h. So notice how instead of the a, we have a specific x value of 4 that we plugged in. Now this f of 4 plus h here, I'm going to do it on the side. So if f of x is equal to x squared minus 6x, which is the function that we're given, then f of 4 plus h, we would just plug in that 4 plus h for all the x's. So 4 plus h squared, you would have to FOIL that because it's 4 plus h times 4 plus h. So you would end up with 16 plus 8h plus h squared. And then this negative 6 here will distribute in the brackets. So we'll have negative 24 minus 6h there. And then notice how the h squared is a like term by itself. So that would just be h squared. Uh, the 8h and the negative 6h, those are like terms. So that would give us 2h and then 16 and minus 24, that would give us minus eight. So for the f of four plus h, we would just write out this expression that we got here. So it would be h squared plus two h minus eight. And then notice how we have to subtract f of four and f of four, if we plug in here, we would have four squared, which is 16 minus 24, which would give us negative eight and then this is still all over h. So one more time, this f of 4 plus h, we did it here, so that's this bracket, minus f of 4, f of 4, if we plug in 4 for the x values in the function that we're given, we would just get negative 8, so that's that bracket there, that's still all over h. Then we got the limit as h goes to 0. Here, we'd have negative, negative, that would turn into positive, so negative 8 plus 8, that would turn into 0 and we're left with h squared plus 2h all over h. Now, if you remember, when we were doing this with the difference quotient in advanced functions, what we wanted to do is we wanted to get rid of that h in the denominator because we can't plug in a zero for h at this point because anything divided by zero is undefined. So same thing here in calculus. To get rid of that h in the denominator, we would factor out an h from the numerator. And now notice how the h's cancel out. So we're left with the limit as h goes to 0 of h plus 2. And now we could plug in 0 for h, and we would just be left with 2. So that there represents the slope of the tangent for this function x squared minus 6x at an x value of four. So the slope of this red line is equal to two. Now in this case, when we went through this process, we found the specific slope of the tangent at an x value of four, which is what we were supposed to do. And we got a value of two right away. Now this is one way to do it. However, another popular way that teachers sometimes like to show it is that they'll find the general slope of the tangent for this function at an x value of a 
And to do that, they'll use the same formula that we've been using for the slope of the tangent, the limit as h goes to zero of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. But notice how we have an a here, just a general variable, versus here we had a four right away. Now, this part, f of a plus h, I did on the bottom here. So we have our function x squared minus 6x, and then when you plug in a plus h for all the x's, you'll have a plus h squared minus 6 times a plus h in brackets. And then if you FOIL this and then distribute the uh, negative 6 inside, you would end up with a squared plus 2ah plus h squared minus 6a minus 6h. So I put that whole expression in brackets here. So this first bracket represents f of a plus h, and then we're subtracting f of a if we just plug in a for x in the function that we're given x squared minus 6x. And then this is still all over h. So then when you simplify that numerator, when you distribute the negative in, the a squares will cancel out and the negative 6a and the positive 6a will cancel out and you'll just be left with 2ah plus h squared minus 6h all over h. Now the same kind of thinking applies that we uh, performed in that process. You want to get rid of that h in the denominator because you can't sub in zero yet because that would be undefined. So what you do is you factor out an h and then notice how now the h's will cancel out. So now you're just left with the limit as h goes to zero of 2a plus h minus six. Now there's something I wanna mention about this step here. The only reason we're able to cancel that h in the denominator, which is what our goal is, is because we're able to factor out an h from every term in the numerator once we simplified this equation. And you always want to make sure that you get to a point where each term in the numerator, once this is all simplified, has an h. If there's a term that doesn't have an h and there's still that h in the bottom, then you know you did something wrong because we have to cancel that h out and the only way to do that is to factor out an h from each of these terms. And notice how each of these terms do have an h. Same thing if you notice here. Once we simplified everything, we got to h squared plus 2h, and we we're able to factor out an h because each of these terms have an h. So if you ever get to this step where you have a bunch of terms and one of the terms doesn't have an h attached to it, then you know you did something wrong. You messed up on some kind of algebra previous to that. And then once the h's cancel out, we're just left with the limit as h goes to zero of 2a plus h minus six. And now notice how we can sub in that zero for h, and we're just left with 2a minus six. So that there, 2a minus six, represents the general slope of the tangent of this function x squared minus six x at an x value of a. And this is a pretty versatile pretty good equation to have because now we can figure out the slope of the tangent at any point for this function. So if we wanted the slope of the tangent at an x value of 7, we would just plug in 7 for a. 2 times 7 is 14 minus 6 is 8. So we know at an x value of 7, the slope of the tangent, if we drew one, it's a pretty bad drawing. It's actually going through the function. It shouldn't do that. But anyway, you get my point. The slope of the tangent at an x value 7 on this function would be 8. We can just plug in 7 for a. And now similarly, because we're finding it at an x value of 4, we can just plug in 4 for a, and we'd have 2 times 4 minus 6, which would give us 2, which is what we got here. So a bit of a different approach. So here we found the specific slope at an x value of 4, at a specific x value, right away, straight away. We got the answer at the end right away. But here, first we found the general slope at an x value of a, and then we have plugged in that a value of four and found the slope to be two. So either way, usually teachers uh, will show it this way, but your textbook will show it this way. So I thought I would show both. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.